Good evening and welcome to the Cover One Buffalo Podcast. You are joining your host Greg Thompson for the second in our 2020 Buffalo Bills Draft Recap Series. And tonight going to be joined by our friend from the Cover One Draft Show, Russell Brown. Russ, how we doing, man? Greg, I'm doing great, man. How are you? Good, good, good. It's been uh, been fun kind of diving back. And, I, you know, obviously everybody listening to the show knows that I, I approach these things from a purely Buffalo Bills standpoint. <laughs> I'm a huge NFL fan overall, but I am a 95% NFL fan, 5% college fan. So I, I watch the big games in the background on Saturday. I try to dedicate my family time on Saturday because I hide for 12 straight hours every Sunday. Um, so I, I try to be a responsible father here and there. Um <laughs> So for guys like you that just spend so much time studying the players, you know, all the radio spots that you do, all the different pods that you do, your your own draft guide, which we'll, we'll get into in a minute here, tell the fans what's it like having all of that time and effort finally come to fruition in those three days and, and, and being able to see your work come out where you can see, oh, yeah, and, and waiting for those guys to, to get their names called. It's uh, it's hard to describe, man. It's, uh, it's a, like – when you get to the draft, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air. You're like, all right, we made it. And then you get through the first night, you're really excited. And you're like, all right, I knew about that guy. I knew about that. And like this draft was different because the first round, it actually made sense. A lot of teams did really well in the first round and really throughout the draft. And then you get excited and you're like, all right, let's see who can capitalize on day two. Then you get through day two and then you get to like day three and you're like, man, this is about to be over. I don't want this to end, but it's great. I mean, it's just like, for me personally, it's just been the last three years have just been like literally stepping stone after stepping stone after stepping stone. And like, I have so much to thank for, you know, the, just all you guys at cover one, especially Eric um, and just all the, the help and the resources that he's given me. But yeah, man, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's, it feels great to be able to do this all the time and to be able to, not have to shave and like, you know, it's just, it feels good, man. So like, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, I, I'm thinking, I can't find the word, but um, it's rewarding. That's the word I'm looking for. It's very rewarding to, to kind of, I don't know, have a, a little guide come out and, and all that stuff. So it's, it's been great. No, that's awesome. And I have to say, I was really impressed. I shot you feedback right as it came out. Man. Uh, so we'll see it tonight as we get into it and uh, kind of showed it in our show last night with uh, with Christian Page going over our first pick for, for AJ Epinesa. So before we dive into that second pick, um, kind of give you a, just a, a one minute uh, overview. Any, any thoughts on that first pick with the, the Bills getting AJ Epinesa falling down to 54? I know we used your guide and saw that you had him as your 30th overall prospect. So at least at face value, a decent value. Yeah, I was a little surprised he fell that far. I, I kind of had a hunch that he would maybe be a late first, probably more than likely fall out of the first round completely and be an early second rounder. That seems to be kind of the trend with certain guys. You know, you, we saw it last year, Cody Ford fell yeah. right in the lap of the, of the Bills. And Epinesa, the same thing here. But 54 was a pretty significant drop. And I think just the run of a couple running backs and some receivers and then a couple of defensive backs – kind of pushed him just down the board and it fell perfectly for them. And I mean, Brandon Bean kind of fleecing the draft again, just getting the best player available uh, both times, you know, last year with Ed Oliver, who we wanted. And then this year, more than likely AJ Epinesa was high on their board, but you know, I like AJ quite a bit. He's, you know, he's, he's very powerful. He's got really good length at, at six, five, two seventy five, um, And he got better as the year went on. He kind of started slow, but he ended the year really, really well. And I think he's, you know, he had seven, eight sacks, seven, I think it was seven and a half sacks through six games uh, to end the year. And he ended with, you know, 11 and a half sacks. So I think he's going to be an eight to 10 sack guy for uh, the bills. And, um, you know, I think he could play in a, in a versatile, versatile role as far as being able to be a, a five technique where I really like him, but I think he could move inside to a four eye technique uh, and maybe even be an interior pass rusher uh, that I've, I think we all wanted Shaq Lawson to be as a kind of that three technique and, and rush from the inside. So I think you've got Oliver and Epinesa where maybe on third downs, you plug those guys inside. Um, and I think it could be really beneficial. So I, I like him. It's a steal at 54. No, and, and that's exciting to hear. And going into tonight, you know, our, our 
second pick in the the Bills draft, which was their third rounder, brings us to Zach Moss. And I think it's a name that, you know, as far as the remainder of the picks that come here, there's a couple others that that we'll talk about in the series that are names people are familiar with. But, you know, the, the whole Bills Mafia idea going into this, there were a lot of people really in that camp of wanting a running back. And, you know, it, it seemed pretty consistent that there was a, a pretty firm top six. And it, it broke off into different camps of whether you thought, you know, Dobbins or Taylor or, you know, Akers or Edwards, Hilaire or Swift, what order they were. And then Moss was always thrown in there, but he was always pretty firmly in that fifth or sixth spot, um, but was right there in that role. I was a little surprised when he was the ninth running back taken. Um, But why don't you give us just a a quick overview of what we're going to be looking at um, from a prospect standpoint and, and what what the Bills fans can can really look forward to in seeing this kind of player being added. Moss was a guy that I started watching two years ago. Um, I really started paying attention to Utah, Tyler Huntley, and just really paying attention to that that team in, in, in general. And Zach Moss was the big reason for that. And um, I think he's a, a terrific pick, um, maybe a little earlier than most people thought, but um, he was my 62nd overall pick and uh, – or six, 62nd overall pick ranked player. And, you know, he's a short stride athlete. You know, you'll notice his runs. He's not going to be, you know, a long strided kind of runner. He's, he's going to be very short, quick, choppy steps, but he's got terrific lower body flexibility. The, the way that he can get out of tackles and the contact balance that he has, but the, just the way he can break out of a tackle and, have that lower body flexibility. It's very unique for a player of his size at five, nine, two twenty three. Um, I think his vision and his ability um, on zone runs is is what's going to make him so special. Um, and I mean, I, I like Devin Singletary quite a bit, but Zach Moss is certainly, in my opinion, the better back of the two. And I, I think that might be a little rich for some people, but I think as far as just a, a pure running back standpoint, I think Zach Moss is a, is a, is a better fit as far as being a number one back in, in the, in the NFL. But I think they're going to complement each other very well. And Moss, I think maybe fell down boards a little bit simply because the guy hurt his knee getting into bed. I mean, it's one of those things where I think you look at it and then you don't get an opportunity to see the pro day. He didn't have a great combine. Um, And I mean, his long speed, that was always going to be a question mark. Everybody should know that by watching him. He didn't have the track speed. He was going to get tracked down. So I think he's a great fit in this offense. I think he's going to be, again, like I mentioned, very good with Singletary. Um, I think eventually he'll be the starting back. Um, I think he, he reminds me a little bit and I'm not saying he is going to be him because I don't do pro comps, but I did get kind of a Ezekiel Elliott vibe watching him throughout his time in college. And again, like I said, I've been watching him for two years. So it wasn't like I watched three or four games or some highlights. I watched him pretty consistently over the last two years. And I just, I felt like the running styles were very similar. I think obviously Zeke was the better back of the two um, clearly, but I think Moss is, is a really great pick and I'm excited to, to be rooting for him in Buffalo. No, I, I think that that really spells on I, I was the same way in that the he has, like you said, those short, uh, quick steps, but but that consistently wide base that the mm-hmm. same way I'm not trying to put this, you know, comparison on him or expectation on him. But I, I really felt like he had a lot of Marshawn Lynch to him in the way that he would just kind of maintain that same square feel bounce off of hits, but not not have to regather himself. He just would keep going (laughs) when he was running. It's just that kind of natural ability is it's really hard to learn or to train. It's, it's very similar to Devin Singletary in that where he has that crazy short area vision and those quick steps where he's never going to be a track star, but you can't, you can't train someone to do that. Eric and I would always joke, my favorite run from Devin Singletary last year was a two-yard gain. But it was a two-yard gain where he made four consecutive like side jukes where he just kept – and he made four separate guys miss where it should have been a two- or three-yard loss, and he just embarrassed four straight guys, and he only gained two yards, but it was just hysterical watching. It was like what you see with like peewee football where you just have the one kid who just – doesn't deserve to be on the field with the rest of the kids and watching Moss play. There's a lot of that stuff where you just can't teach it. And I do yep. think you saw him run that kind of virtual pro day where I don't, I don't think the four seven forty in the, in the combine was 
match it up to what you saw in film. But when he ran the the pro day version and it was a four five two, that that was closer. Like he's never going to be a track star, but I think he's has okay adequate speed. Um, he's never going to run away from people. But it's it's his calling card in the league is going to be that tackle breaking ability. I know PFF loved him from that standpoint with mm-hmm. how consistently he broke tackles and how he was able to to consistently do that at a, at a repeated basis. And that's one thing that, you know, for obviously the analytics crowd, I think goes a little heavy with it, but it's one of the things that seems to translate most consistently from a running back standpoint is if you break tackles in college, you're probably going to break tackles in the pros. Um, so that's a, an exciting idea. And you touched on it earlier, and I, I know you triggered a few Bills fans when you <laughs> said it. Um, but Eric and I talked about it. I said I, I was livid when Devin Singletary got picked. I wanted Chase Winovich. I wanted um, Jalen Ferguson. I wanted that pass rusher. Both of them were on the board. Um, and then they drafted this kid that, had one of the historically worst combines in history from a running back standpoint. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I am overjoyed to be as wrong as I was because he was phenomenal. So when we say better, Eric and I both said this to the preview, the folks in the Slack channel, Zach Moss is a better prospect than Devin Mm -hmm. Singletary was. Now Devin Singletary outperformed his prospect profile pretty significantly I think as a rookie yeah. um and that that doesn't mean that all of a sudden Zach Moss is going to leapfrog that and now also outperform his profile by as much as Singletary did but if you're just comparing them side by side as prospects coming out Zach Moss is the superior prospect between the two. Oh, for sure and I mean and, and there's nothing against Singletary by any means I mean he was so productive at Florida Atlantic um I mean and, and he put on a highlight reel uh every time he touched the football, but it was just, you, you watch the two and you can tell I, I, in my personal opinion, just Moss is a, a much more well-rounded physical runner. Um, but again, I, I think they are going to probably roll with Singletary to start the year. Um, if we get into to football in September, hopefully. And, and I think that'll be the guy that's, that's going to carry the load, but you know, they did some odd things last year. You know, I, I didn't think, um, Gore was going to get as many touches as he did. And, and Singletary was kind of just stuck waiting in the wings. And eventually it, it worked out for him. I, I think that's going to be the same case here with Zach Moss. And um, I think you can utilize both guys in, in short yardage situations as well. Um, and I think that's going to be key. But um, yeah, I mean, I, it, it wouldn't really surprise me either if we saw, you know, one drive Zach Moss and then the next drive, you know, Devin Singletary. But uh, yeah, no, th- for sure, Zach Moss was the, the far superior uh, player in college just from a, a tape standpoint. And I think that I, I think that's exactly what I expect. I, I had said leading into this, I was on the train of wanting that legit RB2. I was I had always wanted it more at 86 than 54, just Mm -hmm. from an asset allocation standpoint. And I thought that was a a nice pocket of value. And I I consistently said, I thought you could get one of those top five or six guys at pick 86. Um, And and I'll I'll admit, I think that the top end went a little bit faster than I expected to have (laughs) all of Dobbins, Akers, you know, Taylor Swift, all of them gone by I think pick 55 was a little bit faster than I had anticipated and, and faster than what the recent draft history had been. And then I was a little nervous because I was like, oh, man, I really wanted to get one of those. And then you start to get some of the Keyshawn Bonds and A.J. Dillons and some of those other picks. You're like, oh, uh, all right. <laughs> if you're yeah. not going to take Moss up. And, and you heard Brandon Bean talk about that in his press that he was getting nervous, too, and trying to trade up. And they couldn't get the the compensation right. And then he fell into their laps anyways that he was able to snag them. And, and you look at this. I, I have the, the mock draftable web pulled up here that you can see what we're talking about here, that there are some areas that are not – your ideal um, profile, but some mm-hmm. of the names that are funny and, and Bills fans will remember. Um, I had a couple people tweet after the pick that he, they think he's Travis Henry 2.0, and I think that that's um, probably a pretty reasonable comp. That you know Travis Henry was never uh, a long ball threat; he was never some elite high end athlete, but he was just impossible to tackle and always yeah. maintaining contact balance, bouncing off of uh, tackles, staying squatty and, and short to the ground short strides and you were always able to maintain that falling forward and you know for as historic of a career as Frank Gore had and even some of the initial run I think some Bills fans remember a pretty painful struggle 
to the end of the year, you know, early on in the year, they don't win that Titans game without him. You know, after Devin Singletary pulled his hamstring, we had a three game stretch there where Gore was responsible for many of those wins and that we needed that. And hell, we were in the Patriots game because of him. He had over 100 yards and, and was in that game because of him early on. Mm-hmm. And that now bringing in a younger version of that. And I'm not, I'm not putting on the expectation that you have a third all time rusher in NFL history, that, that that's what Moss is going to have, but for who, what the value is going to be on the field in 2020, I'm excited to have a guy like, like Zach Moss. Well, and something too that we're seeing is, is teams are, are finding, I think kind of similar backs and complementing them with each other. And if you look at, you know, previous drafts, you look at just the Patriots as an example. I mean, they've developed James White into a pass catching specialist, but you know, they drafted Damian Harris out of Alabama relatively early in the draft. They drafted Sony Michelle in, in the first round of the, the draft a few years ago. You look at the Lions. I mean, they, they moved up for carry on Johnson. And then this past year, two years later, they, they draft DeAndre Swift uh, with the 35th pick. So I think it's teams are, are understanding that, you know, maybe running the football doesn't necessarily win you the same amount of games as it used to back in the day, but you still need to have a kind of a, a, a well-oiled machine getting into the playoffs and you have to be able to run the ball. Um, and I think that's something that teams are starting to realize. And if you can have, I think, two similar backs that really complement each other pretty well, um, I think it, it pays off. And I think that's something that we're going to see here with the Bills as they should be quote you know knock on wood but they should be the favorite in the AFC East and uh, as they move forward and we make that push for the playoffs I mean we're going to be seeing Singletary and Moss being reliant um, especially if Josh Allen you know doesn't limit the turnovers and and doesn't take that step forward so I think this is another way of protecting Josh Allen and his development within the offense. Well, and I think that, you know, I, I pulled up some of Zach Moss's production here in college that, you know, this isn't um, an A.J. Dillon or heck, even Devin Singletary coming out. We had some questions just because Florida Atlantic didn't use him in mm-hmm. a pass catching role that we, we knew the skill set was there in theory, um, but they just didn't show it. You know, Zach Moss is coming in with 66 career catches and had, you know, his senior year, you know, 13.9 yards per catch shown the ability to, to get some yardage after the catch mm-hmm. that. You know, you talk about what I think a lot of fans go to is when they think complement, they think the Deion Lewis, Derrick Henry, they think Tiki Barber, Brandon Jacobs, they think Thunder and Lightning, that it needs to be polar opposite skill sets. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I want a 60, 40, 50, 50 split where when the guy comes on the field, you don't know what's going on. You don't have Mm -hmm. an automatic tell that, oh, you know, every Bills fan remembers, hey, what was happening last year when Lee Smith and Frank Gore were coming onto the field? It's probably, well, every once in a while it was a play action bomb to Patrick DeMarco. Um, but beyond that, um, when those guys came on the field, it was an obvious tell that, hey, we're probably going to run, you know, a dive or off tackle. It wasn't going to be a stretch. It wasn't going to be any, you know, any crazy. And every once in a while they do some play action stuff, but it was just an obvious tell of what was going on. When TJ Yeldon come, came on the field, we were passing. It was just period. Yep. That, that's what yep. was going on. When you have guys like Devin Singletary and Zach Moss now, you can be more variable. You can be more versatile. You can avoid tipping your hand to the offense. And now with the setup they have where you have such an obvious top three it, from a receiver standpoint, it really leans into that 11 personnel over and over and over again. Keep you know uh, Diggs, Brown, and Beasley on the field as much as possible and then just rotate the two running backs. So it doesn't yep. really matter who's on the field. You're not tipping your hand to there. And, you know, you talked about it earlier. I think that this – the blending of the analytics world, fantasy football, and actual football keep getting blurred over and over mm-hmm. again. And I get it from a fantasy football standpoint, the running backs don't matter and zero RB and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and then you get into, you know, I obviously lean heavily into the financial side of football and spot track and the cap and all that kind of stuff. And I do believe there there's a pretty solid case to be made that you should never pay a running back a monster second contract I think that's legitimate I think that people take those two things that running backs are replaceable because there's a lot of talent you should never pay a running back and it's turned into this crazy narrative of running backs don't matter well that's stupid 
Right. Yeah. Ta- talent at the running back position matters. I think you should draft it. I mm-hmm. think you should keep it on a on a replaceable rookie contract, but talent at the running back and this idea that, oh, you can get running backs anywhere because, hey, look, Philip Lindsay was an undrafted free agent. Well, you want to know what? There were 67 other undrafted free agents on rosters that didn't do crap. So, yes, <laughs> Philip Lindsay was great, yep. but what about he was one out of 67 that right. were on NFL rosters that year, and the rest of them did nothing. So this idea that, oh, you can just find anybody anywhere to turn into a thousand yard back is just nonsense. It makes me crazy. Well, and when you get, you know, a guy like Singletary with a with a four year contract, well now if you know you get through four years and let's say he is playing well, yeah. but like you said, you don't want to pay him. Well, now you still have Zach Moss for at least that one more year if everything's going right. But, you know, as you alluded to earlier too, you talked about pass catching and his ability as a pass catcher. He's really evolved in that area. And I, I just want to compare numbers for people. You know, Zach Moss, 66 career receptions. Even if you take away that, that freshman year with the one catch, 65 receptions. DeAndre Swift taken essentially 50 picks earlier, only has 73 career catches in, in his career through three seasons. So, you know, essentially it's similar volume. Um, and I think you can see a similar style. Now I think Swift's probably a little bit better in the open field yeah. just with his elus- elusiveness and everything else. But I mean, at the end of the day, I still like Zach Moss a lot. And I think he's going to complement um, in the passing game very well. And I think that's, that's a big benefit to have, but beyond that too is, you know, like you mentioned, you don't want to become one dimensional. You don't want to have that, that formation where you're in 11 personnel, you're under center, whatever. Well, Zach Moss has the ability and they showed this at Utah with Tyler Huntley to run a split zone or a, a, a zone read. And to, to be able to do that and to have the, the ability, that comfortability and the knowledge of running that that's going to help Josh Allen, who can be kind of that RPO, that running quarterback from time to time. So I think when you get guys that can be, out of the out of the single back formation, out of an eye formation, out of a shotgun, you're going to see so many different variations with both running backs. So I'm really excited about it, and I, I think you know it, it's going to be. It, it was maybe a, I, I don't know. I, I felt like getting a running back was probably a day three thing for the Bills. Just simply consider some of the other areas, but getting Zach Moss where they did, it's a it's a steal in my opinion. So I'm. I, I think their first two picks are, are home runs, and I think it's going to pay off in a big way as we talk about the Bills throughout the year and, and as we push for the playoffs. No, I, I, I agree. I, I think that there were there were lots of different combinations. You could have gone. I think that, you know, I, I certainly was, you know, clamoring for Christian Fulton when he was there <laughs> at the pick, but I can't be mad at that. But, you mm-hmm. know, I, I said, hey, with Mims, Epinesa, and Christian Fulton on the board, I, I'm not going to be mad. Just pick one of them, and they did. You know, so I might have taken Fulton. Bolton, but yeah, I was ecstatic. The same thing, you know, there, I, I think it depends on where you fell in that scale of how comfortable you are with the Josh Norman, EJ Gaines, you know, b- battle with Levi Wallace there. Um, but obviously I think that they showed t- waiting until the seventh round for Dane Jackson, that obviously Brandon Bean and Leslie Frazier and Sean McDermott are more comfortable than most fans are. So um, we'll, we'll see where that goes, but um, why don't we uh, give any closing thoughts on Zach Moss, let the people know uh, where to find you on, on Twitter and what Christian and you have going on with uh, wrapping up, the cover one draft show yeah I mean I wouldn't set the expectations too high I don't think we're going to see a thousand yard rusher by any means I think it's going to be like we mentioned a a 60 40 split a 50 50 split maybe even 55 45 but um, you know we'll we'll see which way it it, you know it it teeters is it going to be Moss with the the higher volume or or, uh, Singletary but I'm excited about it I, I think you're going to see a lot of production you know probably hopefully over 600 rushing yards. If you get over 600 yards as a rookie running the football, uh, I think it's, it's, it's promise and you're going to grow. So um, I think the big number to watch is just touchdowns. If, if he can score touchdowns, then you're winning football games and that's really all that matters. So. Um, and those we'll are see. goal line carries. Josh Allen's not getting wrecked on. So that's it, ex- exactly. And that's <laughs> another thing too, is, you know, you're protecting the investment. So that's how you got to view it. It's just, one running back protecting the other running back while they both protect our quarterback. And, and that's the way to view it. So I think the future is going to be very bright for the running game. And I hopefully, hopefully the, the future for Josh Allen is just as bright, but uh, yeah, find me on Twitter at Russ NFL draft. Um, nothing crazy this week from, from Christian and I, we've been uh, putting together kind of a, a database watch list for 2021. So we're already prepping for next year. Maniacs. Uh, 
yeah, um, I just filled out part of the Big Ten today. Um, so it's pretty cool. You know, did uh, Indiana and Illinois. I've got to go uh, alphabetical or I'm going to go OCD. So um, <laughs> just got to gotta go in order. But uh, yeah, you know, we dropped a, a podcast over the weekend, two of them. So check that out. And just obviously stay up to date uh, on the Cover One app and, and see all the fresh content that we have. So get those push notifications. And whenever we drop something, you'll, you'll get it. No, I appreciate it. I, I love both of your recap shows. I give Christian a hard time that he called AJ Dillon a fullback with upside, but um, <laughs> it just, you know, make sure you guys are checking out the show. Um, and, and again, during, during the year, um, you hear, you guys hear me uh, on the show all the time. I, I reference, you know, Russell and Christian that they're the ones who help me feel smart once I get into that mode. Cause I'll go yeah. the entire year doing nothing. And then all of a sudden, all right, it's February. It's time to cram. I'm like that kid that shows up like the two classes before the final and tries yeah. to hurry up and pass the test. Um, you know, and, and you guys help me with that to be able to get caught up, figure out where to focus my time and attention. So I appreciate you doing that again for us this yeah. year. No, no, no. Um, We'll uh, continue on with this series. You guys will hear uh, us run through each of the picks each day. You guys will hear those drop uh, each morning as you get up having the next pick. So this is the second in that series with Zach Moss. It's been a lot of fun, Russell. Appreciate everything. You guys have been listening to Cover One Buffalo, and we are out.